we go. Guys, my name is Zach. I'm Derek, I think. And I am Robbie. Guys, it's been a long day. It's been a long day without, without you, you, my friend. friend. Totally but different key. We have seen some stuff today. Yeah, we like we went through Nam. I need to go in the back and freshen up a little bit. Need another shower after today. <laughs> Clean pair of undies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Front we, and back. <laughs> we've had some some heavy hitters come down the line today. Mm -hmm. um, you guys are the Sony fanboys here, so y'all take it away and I'll chime in. Derek, where do you want to start? Um, well, where so is much, there to start? There's so much hey, good stuff. Like, start at the beginning. Well, yeah. first, let's just say we were all surprised that the press conference was only an hour. Like, mm -hmm. there were two twists today. The press conference we thought was going to be an hour turned out to be two. two hours and then the one. press conference we thought was two hours was going to be one. Yeah. Um, but it was a jam-packed hour, and it was pretty much... Not as much third party as I thought, but definitely what I said, like nothing but pretty much a bunch of exclusives. And that's what, what needed to happen. Yeah. Sony has had so little in regards of first party support mm -hmm. when, you know, they had a little bit of second party support, but tonight it was just, it was just pull, it was, it was that and they just kind of just. Another one. And they were just like, oh. You like that one? Well, guess what? There's another one for you. And they just kept doing that throughout the night. And Go ahead. When you thought they, they couldn't do anything else, <laughs> <laughs> you just got more and more and more. And that was the awesome part. So let's get the big one out of the way because we did it for Microsoft. Microsoft started their conference with game-wise with Gears of War. Mm -hmm. Sony came out and said, "We'll match you, GOW, and raise you a GOW." <laughs> Freaking God of War! Holy crap! Like we we were sitting there, and they did something new tonight. They did a, a live-action mm -hmm. orchestra, yeah. and we were sitting there, and both of you and I were like, this "Sounds like God of War." Mm -hmm. This sounds like freaking God of War. And then you just see, like, they cut to this, like, the, and it is true, they were going to do Norse mythology this time around. And you saw this kid just sitting here playing the sand and we're like, oh, maybe it's not. And then all of a sudden you see, and then just like in the Gears of War teaser at the end, you see this old grizzled man in the shadows of a cabin. They do that and you just hear the voice and you're like, you and I are like, that's Kratos. Like, we knew, like, straight up, that's Kratos. Well, what gave it away is, at the beginning, the boy. Like, when we saw the boy, mm -hmm. but then you saw that he is he's garbed mm -hmm. with what the traditional, you know, Viking slash Nordic people mm -hmm. wore. So that was cool. And then he was like, there on the table, the knife. And he was just <laughs> like, mother's knife. I was like, I, as someone who's briefly <sighs> played... Change. Oh. <laughs> it's getting a little too hot in here for me. I played just a little bit of God of War, mm -hmm. um, some one of the older ones, but this one being especially in North mythology. That's I, right up your alley. North mythology. North North mythology. <laughs> Thor. I got goosebumps, and it. I didn't get any goosebumps except for Gears of War gave me goosebumps from Microsoft, but saying that Sony was able to give me a goosebumps when I went in and expect, not expecting to know um, a whole lot because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not as up to the know on Sony as you guys are. But God of War, I know what God of War is. I've played God of War and it's seeing... Rooms. Yeah. <laughs> and seeing what, what it gave us with, you know, that the North mythology. Seeing that and Norse. being... Norse mythology. We know what he means. <laughs> I know. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> but giving you a hard time. Being able to see that is just like, that's something that I want to sit down and put many hours into. And they didn't show a great set piece, but see, here's my thing. Obviously, we didn't get a release date. Like, we didn't even get no. a release year. That was the only down part. But still, we got more. <laughs> Probably this Sony. I, as much as I love Sony, the one knack I give them is they only show future stuff. They never show anything that's like out this year. Mm -hmm. That's what Microsoft does well, at least. Is they's like games that are coming out within the next calendar year. Sony's like 2018, if 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 that. If you're lucky. But 
I just thought we could get a CG trailer or something. We got we got a gameplay demo, and mm -hmm. holy cow! Yeah, it looked freaking amazing. Um, it, it's 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 great to be a gamer. Yes, it is. It Xbox doesn't matter. and PlayStation. It does not matter if you're the Master Race PC or if you're Xbox or PlayStation. Mm -hmm. Everybody's getting their jollies tickled today. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I love what Nick says. He's like, now is the time, Robbie. You <laughs> need to get a PlayStation. And like I said earlier, um, I've talked to uh, parents extensively. I'm like, you know, I was like, I really need a PlayStation and Christmas and my birthday. Come on. <laughs> mm -hmm. But so. do you want to unpack some more of the gameplay? Yes, let's unpack that thing. <sighs> so, didn't show much in the way of enemies, but they did have one big guy that they he had mm -hmm. him take on. And the whole, like, environment, like, they definitely took a lot of the environmental rendering from, I guess, Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah, I would say so. It, it, you know, it has that engine that looks like the same engine running it and everything. Um, I'm wondering if this is his son or is this the someone he took in? Did right. he fall in love with his kid's mother? Um, you know, not really sure on what the relationship is there, but you can see that Kratos has taken on a fatherly role here, trying to teach him how to survive. He's a rough father, but a father. Yeah, nonetheless. he's more like, man up, boy. <laughs> well, if you've seen what Kratos has done in the past, yeah. Yeah, I don't think you can ask much exactly. more. And see, touching on that, like at first it didn't sound like the traditional Kratos mm -hmm. we were used to, so we were like, is this just like a different one? Because he had the body paint, but yeah. we didn't think it was Kratos. But then I saw the stomach scarf yeah. where he, Zeus stabbed him. I'm like, no, that is Kratos. With the blade of Olympus and everything. So doesn't have the chains of Olympus. I'm no. curious if they even tell us why, because those were fused to his body. Right. I guess it's just like when he killed all the gods, it, he was stripped of that because technically Zeus put that, or a, god, a, a Greek god put that on him, like Ares put that on him. Mm -hmm. And when he pretty much killed that whole line of gods, my own, that's my only thinking as to how they would tell that story. Yeah. Because he had a shield and pretty much a battle axe, and the battle axe was B.A. Yeah, the battle axe being, you know, some type of magic, some kind of Norse, some of that magic. It's the, it's definitely that new blade, uh, chains of Olymp blade of Olympus, because the blades of Olympus had the magic abilities mm -hmm. in them too. And you know, seeing that he could just throw the axe and then it like peg somebody to the wall and it and returned to him, yeah. or he's able to summon it back and place it. I'm just like. Boss mode, <laughs> mm -hmm. and when it was saying, you know, you know, you learn this skill, you learn this knowledge, mm -hmm. and all of that. Clearly, there's going to be some type of archery in this. Oh game. yeah, um, fist to fist combat, and what we were saying earlier about Final Fantasy needs to take a, you know, a page from God of War's book on mm -hmm. being able to fight a larger enemy. They case showed in it. Point they showed tonight. it. Like it yeah. was beautiful. Yeah, and it was all like the to, to, to the traditional. God of War combat, like the action, the set piece moments, and then apparently like a new thing called Olymp, oh, what is it, Spartan Rage Spartan mode, Rage and mode. it's just like it didn't show anything flashy, like him like going Super Saiyan or going Kaioken mm -hmm. or whatever, but it's just like, screw weapons, I'm gonna murder you with my bare hands. That's how I am every day. Yeah, Spartan Rage mode. Um, so the whole whole thing kind of started with like this kid trying to kill a deer. A deer, yeah, like every a coming of age thing. Mm -hmm. And it ends with them finally getting the deer. And, and Kratos telling him, you need to finish it. Like, you need to finish the kill. You know, this is, your mother's no longer here. I'm not going to hold your hand. Nope. You have, this yeah. is the time to be a man. Mm -hmm. This is the time to be that person. And, and then he was talking about training him up for this apparently coming war because it pans out and you see this like Mount Olympus type structure with thunder with a thundercloud surrounding it, lightning, and then all of a sudden you see out of nowhere a dragon come in. So it's, I don't know how big dragons right. are in the Norse mythology, but. I was about to say, it's Norse mythology. You're going to be seeing a lot of stuff that you mm -hmm. did not see in your, in, in the, the Greek version of all this. So. <sighs> Sorry, I was just checking the stream. What happened right. earlier is it did the loady thing. Well, when it does the loady. It does the loady thing on here, but mm -hmm. it doesn't like on my phone. Oh, okay. So it might have been just yeah. Probably me bang, banging it's the you, table. It's you, Nick. I'm sorry. It's you. It's not me. It's you. Because you're a Vikings fan. Ooh. Go pack. Yeah. Go Titans. Anyway, <laughs> um, I think we see we see it next year. Oh Nick. no. 
we see it before then. We see it at PSX. I would I would agree with that. So, PSX would be great. Uh, Paris Game Week probably as well. I'll say you could see it as early as I mean you could see it multiple times. You could see it. You could definitely see it at Gamescom maybe, mm -hmm. but they have to show it at least one other time this year. And the perfect thing for me because. God of War is American. Santa Monica Studio is a is a LA based or a California based uh, studio. They will probably save it for PSX because PSX mm -hmm. is in the California area as it is anyway. Yeah, and America's Americans love violence. If y'all don't know that already, <laughs> a little, um, bit. little bit. Do you want to save Days Gone or do you want to hit that now as well? Like they showed the trailer. And then at the end, they showed that uh, the gameplay. Let's just, I mean, we can keep going. Like, because like, that was the next thing. Because I said that one of my bold predictions was Sony Ben shows their game and what it is. Totally Dead Don't Ride would have been way better. Um, name. But anyway. But like I said, I told you it was made by, it was a different studio was doing that. But yeah. Um, game looks phenomenal. Uh, mm -hmm. Concept behind it this guy is a mercenary, a bounty hunter, whatever mm -hmm. he wants to be. And he's driving around on his motorcycle. Um, I don't know if I want it necessarily open world. Mm -hmm. I don't want it to be a state of decay. Or another game. Last of Us knockoff. Yeah. I want it to be something in and of itself where it focuses on the story mm -hmm. elements. Um, the zombies in this thing look absolutely crazy. World War Z style zombies. Yeah. Very smart. Those type zombies are the worst zombies. Because I remember watching... Uh, World War Z and being freaked out, saying, God, I hope nothing happens is nothing like those. Because they were coming, uh, like, he would block off one way and then, whoop, here they come in the other yeah. way. You know, and it, that was the cool thing that you got to interact with the environment, you know, try to slow them down, but you'd run by a window and that's boarded up and then, poof, yeah. like, a whole another flood of them would, you know, push through. It's and crazy. even if you shot one of those red barrels that set them in flames, if they were still breathing, they'd still charge through and be like, Pruah. Yeah, and, uh, like, this game is going to be fun. I'm curious to see how much, what the game actually is. Yeah. It has some interesting combat. I know they were showing off more of like how the zombies interacted with mm -hmm. the world and how what they did when they were trying to get you. Because Ben has been working on this game so long, there was more of, it was a demo, but it almost came off as a very, very pushed as a glorified tech demo just to show as many as how many zombies they can put yeah. on this screen because people have been waiting. Like, I know Colin Moriarty has been waiting for them to freaking announce this game for five years already. They've just been up there, you know, micro-brewing and all yeah, that. Yeah, taking pictures of the lakes up in Oregon. Yeah. <laughs> so, not working on a game, but... Uh, looked great. I'm impressed. Can't wait to see more. Comes out October 25th of this year. No, it does. that's... Did it, it didn't have a release date. That was Last Guardian. Are you sure? Yeah, they did not say because they didn't show it at the wave. end. I think you mi miswrote it because they uh, yeah, they I showed no have. they they showed no release date because even at the gameplay mm -hmm. demo they didn't show anything. Okay, so Last Guardian. So I don't know if that's us or. We're watching ourselves right now. Okay. Just to make sure, because on our computer here, it seems like the stream is frozen, but... Yeah. Okay. So. All right. So, anyway. It's probably just the... Yeah. Just All right. Computer. Just our replay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Refresh. Anyway. Class Guardian. <laughs> October 25th, 2000. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, Called it, by the way, October for mm -hmm. Last Guardian. I, I thought it would want be the same day as VR, but it was the same month, at least. Yeah. I'm not excited for this game, to be honest. It's not the type of game that I care for. Yeah. If it would have came out 10 years ago after Shadows of the Colossus. Yeah, because yeah. that was the pinnacle of Team Eco. Yeah. So, and I'll be honest, I'm just going to, I didn't unpack this at the pre-show, but let me just get this out of the way. Doesn't matter, you know, Final Fantasy 15, we're getting two of these long-awaited, in-development, mm -hmm. transitional games. Final Fantasy 15, September, Last Guardians, the month afterward. And KH3 is probably going to be next year, and with the exception of K Kingdom Hearts 3. Let's be honest. Kingdom no Hearts 3 has been in development forever, too. Well, yeah, yeah, but no, what I'm saying is, like, K K Kingdom Hearts 3 will probably be, no matter what it is, at the end of the day, fans will still love it just mm -hmm. because it's so beloved. But 
Final Fantasy and Last Guardian, no matter, I know they're still beloved in a way, but fans have been so burned by this development process, like with it being in, in and out of development hell, no matter what we get, it will not meet the fans' expectations for as long of a wait as they've had to endure. Yep. Yeah, and I think that goes back to what you said, that Sony teases things so far in advance that you get these games like this, mm -hmm. that it's, it's too far. I feel like that hurts them way more than it helps them. Because, yeah, you're given the concept or the idea that, hey, you know, this game is it's early in development, but I would rather them somewhat keep a lid on a game instead of for 10 years be like, hey, this game's coming one day. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's kind of the old idea of how to think about games because you've seen in the last two years things are in a year launch window pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, that's how it should be. It shouldn't be something where it's like, oh, in two years. I'm not talking about No Man's Sky, which we didn't see any of that no. tonight. Which I'm fine with mm -hmm. because just put it out. Just save it. You, we know it's August 9th. Just leave it be and put it out. Yeah. Uh, the only way you should be showing a game like at E3 like that is if you are at least a year, maybe two from having that game completely right. done and sent out. Mm -hmm. Yes, I understand that sometimes developers have something that comes up that they cannot help, that it is physically, they're not able to get it out of that date, which is understandable. But right. don't tease for, you know, 10, 20 years. Five years even, so. Yeah. Duke Nukem, all of that good stuff. <laughs> um, next, Horizon Zero Dawn. I honestly didn't think, because I think, I thought since they announced, like I said last week on the or on the pre-show earlier, that last week they had this trailer that showed a new release date of February 28th. They had to mm -hmm. say, we, we're sorry, we're pushing it back. I didn't think we'd get a new demo, like maybe PSX, or maybe Paris Games Week or Gamescom, because Gorillas, I think, is definitely German, in, in Germany or whatever, but they're definitely international. They're definitely over in Europe. Yeah. But we got a meaty gameplay demo. Which well, I was impressed with. Yeah, like you saw her be able to pretty much override the code in this mount, and mm -hmm. she was able to ride it to the village. Which you said that it was a, um, it had a huge map, Zach. It's what you said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One thing I noticed, like when you when she went to the map, it looked like she was super far away from. That's where why the, she said she had to get a mount because. But like once she got the mat, the, the mount, it didn't seem like it took her very long at all. Well, like, because it's it was faster. Because if she could control it, it would get her there faster than her on her own two feet, and that was a big thing. Because let this is by Guerrilla Games, and yeah. if you don't, if you're not familiar with them, they've made Killzone before. That's all they've done is pretty much Killzone, with the exception of the early games, which yeah. I know nothing about. But their Killzone, this is their whole new idea excuse me their whole new idea it's an open world rpg very it's gonna not say it's gonna be like fallout or witcher type thing but it's definitely gonna have elements from witcher at least in there it looks like with the customization and the different abilities yeah and you even had i didn't even jesus christ <laughs> <clears throat> anyway you even have a dialogue will you saw that yeah. in there that there are going to be dialogue options mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm curious to see what is going to happen there with all of that. I'm also interested to see because you see one enemy when she's got like one of the ba one of the base creatures like the watchers. She says it's corrupted. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's going to be like not only do you have to worry about the robot dinosaurs because in the first trailer they showed last year, you found this like giant tyrannosaurus rex, uh, the equivalent of a T-Rex mech last year that so it's not only the mechs you have to worry about, it's yeah. like something else because when she gets to that village, you see this she says it's an ancient robot and it's pretty much causing the infection of these other ro uh, AI robots. So it's like, what kind of backstory is that going to have? Because they've openly stated that Aloy, the protagonist mm -hmm. in the game, she's got to find out. She has pretty much no recollec re recollection of how she got here, why they're outcasts, like pretty much how the world was before. Because this is pretty much like a, a not a post-apocalyptic, but like a world reset. Mm -hmm. Like pretty much it's sort of like, what I am, what uh, I robot is. They created these advanced AI. They took over the world pretty much, and now it's reverted the world back into mm -hmm. prehistoric, prehistoric, you know, primitive times. And the humans are trying to fight for it back. So not only are you finding her backstory and the backstory of what the world was before, but now you're trying to find out what this enemy is potentially. Yeah. Yeah. Now, one thing that I thought was super cool was how when she saw an enemy like the robotic enemy, she was able to scan it. Like, okay, this one's weakness is this. Mm -hmm. 
the that demon that was in or whatever it is it was weak against fire so she had the fire traps the fire arrows and stuff mm -hmm. like that so being able to scan um whatever you're fighting to be able to figure out some kind of weakness is going to be freaking and, and that's huge. some kind of fallouty thing too because you well, can act, 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 um, figure out the weak points i was actually going to say it's more towards witcher because well, that's true. all of the enemies in witcher have okay the ghouls or mm -hmm. are you know more susceptible to this type of oil know, oil and you know different things like that which makes it a little bit more of a robust gameplay and you can even see the dodging mechanics it's not exactly like witcher mm -hmm. but it has a lot of the rolling the moving that type of thing in there so it's going to be a really cool game uh destructibility was mm -hmm. definitely yeah. shown off tonight with um the the corruptor throwing mm -hmm. the rocks and all of the, that tearing down the trees mm -hmm. and everything and what was even like just little these little details that were just awesome when she was riding the mount and she was aiming she was moving her legs to oh, get to the best way to i shoot. didn't catch that That's i was great. just like that is the best thing yeah. i've ever seen so i I can't wait for this to come out. When is it coming out? February 28th. Which, February 28th. if you've been paying attention to release dates throughout today and the prior weeks, February's already loaded. Like, you've, the 14th, you've got For Honor and Persona 5. The 21st, you've got Halo Wars 2. And now, at the end of the month, you've got Horizon Zero Dawn. You want to know why? They're all giving it to me for my birthday. Yeah. Like, it, please play these. They're like, like sure. we hope you get the money to buy all of these. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's the way they're doing it. Okay. Uh, next, Detroit Become Human. Go ahead. Uh, th that was one of the games that I was like mm -hmm. super surprised with. Like, you know, you find out that this dude's an android, and you have all these different options, like different mm -hmm. ways that it could play out. Like, you could you could shoot the guy. You could not have a gun. You could have a gun. You could jump off the building mm -hmm. with him. You could save the girl. Just having so many like realms of possibilities happen mm -hmm. uh that right there is the coolest thing for me it's definitely a quantic dream game you oh, can yeah. definitely see it's code written all over and i know you didn't play them because they're playstation but yeah. heavy rain and beyond two souls the prior two games were were definitely similar like there were different outcomes it pretty much was an early version of what inspired Telltale Games to do the to do their games the way they did with the choice and the different button prompts and all that. But this definitely seems like it's more in depth. Like I was kind of surprised that the main protagonist, like the 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 girl android that they showcased when they unveiled this game at Paris Games Week was, was not, not there. Mm -hmm. It was different, but maybe it's like from a different perspective from several androids. Yeah. Because you see these, like, it's. I pretty much saw a lot of iRobot in this movie, like, ro rogue yeah. AIs doing their own thing, tired of just being upload your code and take commands and being obedient. As but, long as they're not named Sonny, we'll be okay. Oh, we God. don't have any copyright issues. Well, I think, you know, you saw that, okay, if you just walk in and you do these things without doing anything mm -hmm. else, it will go to it will go south really yeah, fast. You know, you're not gonna be able to work your way around it, but if you investigate, you get evidence, you bring more stuff with you, mm -hmm. you can have it where something it goes better. The mm -hmm. girl yeah. say you get shot. You know, there's mm -hmm. several different paths to take this and I, I think what what's interesting is supermassive out Quantic Dream, Quantic Dream yeah. with Until Dawn. So Detroit become human is going to be something that they are going to have to push mm -hmm. and become better than Supermassive. Right. At. And I think they can easily do it. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you. Ah. Um, now, the next thing we saw as the kitchen. Yep. Um, but this, and this, for those, this was like started their, partially started their VR mm -hmm. kind of segment. Uh, this is a fully VR game, and it was just interesting. They were going through, and. Bless you. We really didn't know what right was happening. The moment he got up in this shoddy, run-down looking area, I'm like, this is like that kitchen horror game that people were talking about when they first unveiled PSVR because yeah. that was like one of the main demos. Mm -hmm. So when we get a little bit further, he puts a VCR tape and everything, and it plays this little montage of all mm -hmm. these different things that are happening, and then you see Seven pop yeah. up. And then you see Resident Re Evil again called it. Yeah. So Resident uh, Evil Biohazard. Yeah, like Resident. Well, it's Resident Evil Seven, but it's also I guess it's like 
the colon, like Resident Evil 7 or Resident Evil colon Biohazard or whatever. Yeah, but I'm not really sure. Even uh, Sean Layden mentioned it was like Resident Evil 7. Mm -hmm. So I don't yeah. know. It may be like Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Just have the whole thing. Yeah. Now, that is one thing that, like, watching it up until that point, we had no idea that mm -hmm. this was a no. Resident Evil game. It does not have that, that Resident no. Evil feel to it, the skin. I, I think it was just a, kind of a tech demo of yeah. what it's going to look like. Mm -hmm. I, Especially running on VR, because they did yeah. say that it's not going to be a VR only, like VR exclusive game, but yeah. it will have VR capabilities. Yeah. So I'm assuming if you're not playing VR, it'll might have that, it'll still have that feel to it. Well, I'm sure it's still going to have the feel to it. I think it it's a new Resident Evil. Yeah. They're going in a different way. It's not you know five or six where. You have tons of ammo and all of that. It's mm -hmm. creepier. You see Outlast. You see Outlast Two. That's they're taking. You know, yeah. horror games are different these days, and I think Resident Evil is that is going to be amazing. Um, that was probably one of the coolest. Oh yeah, that was know, definitely things. one of the bigger surprises out of this conference. Uh, the game will be available January twenty first, but you can play a demo of it, demo of it right now. Mm -hmm. A lot of demos to play. Yeah. yeah. Um, then they talked about VR. The actual headset. They said for a while, it's going to be October. It's going to be $400. Tonight, they finally gave a release date mm -hmm. of October 13th. Mm -hmm. Which, again, if my me if memory serves, well, I don't know if that's a, t no, that's a Friday. So that's, again, Friday the 13th. Yeah. Pretty cool. I'm sure <laughs> I have a football game then. Uh, but one thing that was pretty interesting, there are 50 games that are going to be coming mm -hmm. out from October 13th. To December 31st mm -hmm. that are VR. Yeah. Uh, some will be, of course, bigger games, and then some will be smaller games. Mm -hmm. But that's a lot. Yeah. To, you know. In two months, pretty much. Yeah. Um, I'm sure one of those is my dance game, Nick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Farpoint is one of the games that they showcased. Uh, this is a space. Uh, we got to yeah. see it. It, it. it didn't give us a lot of what was going on. No, like man. when it held the gun, it kind of looked Mass Effecty. Mm -hmm. Ma and it, I was like, is this going to be Mass Effect VR? But it was just a whole new idea. Yeah. Uh, the next thing was Star Wars Battlefront X Wing Mission. VR missions. Yeah, which was cool. They there have been teased for a while that they were going to do something with Star Wars and VR. Mm -hmm. I just didn't think it'd be tied into Battlefront. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. I think if they put out several different missions, mm -hmm. it's going to keep Battlefront relevant. Hopefully mm -hmm. it's not something that you have to buy on top of it. I'm sure it is, to be honest. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's a possibility. Well, they did say, because they did, uh, EA came out and said, or whoever came out and said, they want to do a Star Wars game every year. And when we saw EA's yesterday, they didn't say, they said they did Battlefront 2 next year. Mm hmm Visceral's game, 2018, 18, Respawn coming probably 2019, but they didn't say if there was anything this year, and now mm -hmm. we know it's going to be a VR iteration. Yeah, and hopefully it'll be several missions. That would be something that I would actually pay for and enjoy. Right. Yeah. Next thing, this. When we right heard here. this voice, we both practically creamed. <laughs> yeah. Hearing Mark Hamill. It's such a distinctive voice, like you know. Mm -hmm. Hearing him talk about wearing a mask, doing all of these things. Making, a, making it seem like you put on the mask, you become important. Yeah. All of these things leads up to probably my favorite prediction that I made. Rocksteady <laughs> announcing a new game, and that, ma that is Batman VR. It will be coming out this year. Didn't show any gameplay. No. no. Um, I'm hoping it's not just like a little arena combat thing or whatever. It might be. It might be something small mm -hmm. that grows into something bigger down the road. Right. But getting to put on the cow, getting to be Hashtag the Batman. Hashtag the cow. Yeah. I'm sold. Take my money. Hashtag Zach was right, first of all. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'm a man to admit that I didn't think that Rocksteady would come out. I thought they would go quiet. But not only are they making another game... It's coming out this year. Yeah. Um, that being said, I was gonna wait on PSVR. Like I was, I was so adamant. Like I'm gonna wait to see how this tests the market, <laughs> and I'll be darned if they're not gonna have give me a reason to buy it day one. Oh, like, because yeah. if this is pretty much a launch game, I'm in. <laughs> yeah. You've got. You've got now. You've got Batman. Mm -hmm. You've got Resident Evil. Mm -hmm. You've got Star Wars. 
if you're into Final Fantasy, that's something that was yeah, confirmed because, as well. But I'm sure it's more of an arena. Like from what I saw, yeah. it was more arena type stuff. I mean, they could say it could take like the similar gameplay style of Russia Blood, just not on the rails type of thing. It'll mm -hmm. be more free, but it'll still be straightforward type yeah. of deal. So, a lot of things coming for for PlayStation VR, and I'm hoping No Man's Sky is one of those things. Yeah, like. That would be stupid if they it, didn't. It just has to make sense as much as they've worked on this game and pushing it back another seven weeks because it was supposed to be out next week, believe it or not. Yeah. It was supposed to be yeah. originally out next week and they pushed it back another seven weeks. So It would have been great if it would have been. Yeah. Uh, next up was Call of Duty. Um, game. The whole trailer was trying to convince everybody that this is a game that yeah. you should play. The space combat's not dumb. Well... No, it wasn't only that. It was people were burned by Infinity Ward last time because their last game was Call of Duty Ghosts, which to me, I know some people were okay with it. This was like, that was the weakest for me, and that was the the bottom point, like yeah. the lowest point for Call of Duty. I cared nothing for it. I know it was a launch game, but for a tr pedigree like Call of Duty and what Infinity Ward used to be by creating co like games like Modern Warfare 2, mm -hmm. they should have put out a better uh, quality content, and instead we've got a pile of poo. Yeah. yeah. Now, what I will say about this trailer is it was leaps and bounds better than what they gave us, mm -hmm. uh, the first trailer that they gave us. Uh, it made it look more fun to play, like something that I could possibly want to play if I saw mm -hmm. more of this, because they're going in the right direction. If they release, you know, like another trailer mm -hmm. or, you know, I'm seeing better gameplay when it comes out, probably won't be the one that I buy right off. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, they did you know, bump it up a few notches in my mm -hmm. book. Yeah. Uh, they also, of course, talked a little bit more about the remaster of Modern Warfare 1. Yeah. Um, and then they said purchase and play. I'm not sure if you purchase right now, you get to play the remaster or yeah. not. They were really unclear about that. Um, that's one thing Microsoft did a really good job about is explaining a lot of these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, next thing. Well, I just want to end on this. I know you're, you two are probably, I don't know about you, Robbie, but I know you wanted to care about this game. I'm just saying, from the, from the moment they unveiled the trailers, I was already going to be in, more interested in Battlefield 1. And mm -hmm. what I saw from Auto Infinite Warfare made me feel a little bit better. As far as like if I were to eventually get Call of Duty, it would make me feel a little bit better. I'm still going to probably just wait on that, though. It's not going to be something I jump into day one like I usually do. Yeah, yeah I want it to be good. I, I'm on. I'm in the same boat. Mm -hmm. Battlefield looks a lot better. Mm -hmm. I like the game style that Call of Duty used to be. I haven't enjoyed the last few ones. Mm -hmm. um, next thing. They, it, again, Zach was right. <laughs> <laughs> I asked him earlier, you know, it's not, a, it's it's something when they came out, you're like, this is going to be a stupid game from the music that we're hearing. Yeah. And then you see Sean Layden walking out. And you see the, the shadow, shadow of a bandicoot. Shadow of the bandicoot. That could be a book right there. Yeah. Um, so what we're getting is Crash Crash 2 and Crash Warped. Warped. Remaster coming to PS4. Didn't really give an idea. We'll probably hear more PSX. Yeah. yeah. Um, and now it's interesting to note that while... It wasn't announced, probably won't see it till TGS, is Gravity Rush 2 is a thing. You know, it was originally, the first one was a Vita. They remastered it for PS4, but it just was a digital release. I'm curious mm -hmm. to see, will they actually do a retail disc release of Crash, of the Crash collection, or are they just going to do a digital release? Yeah. Um, the thing that kind of deflated my sales a little bit was this next part, part because yeah. I thought it was going to get a release on its own. You right. saw how Ratchet & Clank did such a good job. Uh, with the the movie, well, not necessarily the movie, but the game that's based on the movie, mm -hmm. based on the game. Crash is going to Skylanders Imaginators October 2016. Bad it looks idea. awful. Bad it, it does look idea. awful because, like I said at the pre-show, like dis like the toys to life genre. Sony had a partnership with Disney Infinity. Mm -hmm. Disney Infinity went under a few months ago, so now it was like, what else could they partner with? Who, and I thought it'd be Lego because they already have a relationship with WB mm -hmm. and the Lego games. Instead, they do the opposite. They do what Nintendo did last year with Superchargers, and they use the Amiibo Skylanders hybrid with Donkey Kong and uh, Bowser, and they say, it uh, Skylanders Imaginators, because because the whole niche is like create your own type of Skylander, so I'm pretty sure like you would do the fan favorites, and they did say Crash is going to be a, a character in there. 
I rolled my eyes because out of all the genres that you, out of either of those Toys to Life games you could have chose mm -hmm. with, you went with the one mm -hmm. that I think is the worst and is tanking at the moment. Yeah, I, I think if they would have just did a standalone game, it would have been a much better decision. That, that should have just been it. Like, I know that's how they revived, in a way they revived Spyro with Skylanders. But that was in the peak of Skylanders. Yeah, that and that was the first initiate. Like, it was called Skylanders Spyro's Adventures. That was the first expansion. Yeah. Crash is its own breed, and you could have just left it remasters. Why did you have to yeah. ruin it? You know what I would have loved to see in the remaster? What? The kart racing. That would have I'd been agree with freaking that. amazing. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking forward to play it, playing oh, yeah. the remastered. I'm not touching the Skylander stuff. Man, day one. Why not? Just I'm kidding. not. Um, kidding. Couldn't... Next, Lego Star Wars, uh, Force Awakens. Mm -hmm. They showed a trailer, a little bit more than what mm -hmm. they had been before. You can play a demo right now if you want to. Mm -hmm. uh, Game comes out June 28th. Yeah, so it's very, very close. I'm definitely going to be playing the demo mm -hmm. just to get yeah. into it and see what it feels like. Now, Lord Jesus Christ, thank you, Shuhei. <sighs> Up above, all your mercies flow down from this you. This was the one we ne we none of us even no. mentioned and didn't even think about. And now that I think about it, I'm kicking myself because Greg Miller talked about it on Kind of Funny last week on his predictions. And... We see, like, the curtain falls. I forget who Andrew House comes out. He mentions Destiny for a little bit, like Rise of Iron. And he's like, We're, we, we here at PlayStation like to work with the best and innovative and creative minds. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I'm, it pleases me to announce that our, our partnership with one of the most innovative minds in the industry today. And we're all like, the cur we hear the music, and we don't know what it is at first. And we all just like... Is this Kojima? And that, I was, is this I was Kojima? Like, there's no way that they would have this music for anybody. I was like, no, yeah. nobody would walk out No to one music. would have this buildup except him. For, yeah. yeah. Freaking Kojima at a freaking Sony press conference after all the crap that's happened. Yeah. I mean, for those who don't know, who haven't kept up, mm -hmm. Kojima had a falling out with Konami. He left after Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain came out. Pretty much was done with that game. Ko Konami pretty much banned Kojima from the Game Awards show last year. Yeah, for a bunch of pricks. Lawyers, it was a whole stank. So Kojima took some time off to go explore, you know, like give himself a break, yeah. and figure out what he wanted to do next. So a few months roll by, and you get something probably I want to say February, March, yeah. of this article saying that, or actually maybe it was even PSX that they announced that they were actually doing a partnership. Yeah, there was a video. Yeah, uh, that's right. Andrew House and, and Kojima. Yeah, and there was just his logo, his new studio logo. Yeah, now I think about it. it was, What's it was, hilarious is when Andrew House <laughs> said, I made the joke that Andrew House just got done. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. But you see you, you see that they said that we're proud to announce that we're working with Kojima mm -hmm. and that his game will be exclusively to PlayStation 4. Granted, Kojima has always been a Sony guy mm -hmm. from the get-go. Like He's been super pumped about the graphics for PS4. He's been all in everything PlayStation, so this just made sense. At worst, I just thought, actually not, I'm sorry, at best, I thought we'd come out, he just discussed you know, why he chose PlayStation and maybe just talk about you know, a few concepts behind the game. We got a CG trailer yeah. of his new game. It was, of course, we, and we said it, it was going to be something weird because that's just how Kojima rolls. And it was definitely weird. Like, you saw a bunch of dead crabs on, like, a, a beach, dried beach, out beach. And then you started seeing handprints and they would fill with oil or something yeah. like that. Yeah, well, and yeah. then you see this naked man oh, sitting yeah. there and you see this child, like, this infant tethered like to a, his, like, his stomach. Yeah, like a weird wire, umbilical yeah, cord. Yeah, a black kind of wire. Yeah. And then you see him stand up and hold the child. Freaking Norman Reedus. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. If you don't they, know who that is, Walking Dead. Daryl. Daryl. If you don't know who that is, just You're, get yeah. off the channel right now. <laughs> yeah. Goodbye. Oh. But, you know, it was, and it made and it made sense the more I watched that trailer because they worked on PD, like, Silent, well, Silent Hills together. That yeah. was like him, Guillermo del Toro, and Norman Reedus was the head actor of Silent Hills. And after that went to crap, Norman Reedus and Kojima and... Del Toro all said, we still want to do a project together. Now, we didn't see anything Del Toro, but you still saw Redis and Kojima. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure Kojima is trying to get Del Toro on. Oh, project. yeah. I'm sure, just for like the lighting effects. But we mm -hmm. saw a CG trailer, and it looked really cool. It looked very interesting because you see the child disappear, and then Norman get this like 
tattoo and then like, like this weird mud it's, all over him like handprints, handprints and all of that and, and then, then like the little baby sit. baby oil handprints well i was just like, carl okay. down his legs and in the sand and then you see this incision on his stomach mm -hmm. like, and then you just see and then you just see like they pan out and you see like these five beings just hovering over this place and it's yeah, like what like, in the world dead wells all yeah everywhere you're like what the hell is this <laughs> yeah. i was like are y'all confused as much as i, am? I was like nah, please man, tell this. me i'm not I alone like, i was like this totally makes sense i was like i was like oh yeah it's about about a baby and he turns into an old baby and crawls off and I'm like yeah 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 it's benjamin button <laughs> ah. and then at the end of it you actually get a name for this game like more, the more we kept watching, the more I was I was surprised at how much we were actually seeing of this yeah. next game. Like I just thought, one, I didn't think he'd be at the Sony stage, that was disproved. I didn't think he'd actually show a, anything on this new game. That was, and I didn't think we'd even get a name for this game. And what the what's the name that we eventually saw? Death Stranding. I thought it. I first I thought it was Death Standing, well, but it made a little bit more sense. Right. <laughs> but it's Kojima. Death so it Stranding doesn't have to make sense. Yeah. Um, I, we don't know how long it has before it comes out. I'm sure it's going to be 2018. Mm, 2020. If, if this. If Easy. this. 2019 at the earliest. Yeah. 2020. Um, Kojima takes a really long time developing oh, yeah. his game. So uh, going to be a, a long time before you see more of this, but them bringing him out, showing that, yes, he is a part of our company now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got his own studio. He's part of us. He deserves know. the time. Like, as the, with how bad the relationship with Konami ended, coming to Sony, Sony better treat him like a freaking king because yes. not only will he make great games, he will, if, because it's exclusive to PS4, he will make Sony a ton of money yeah. mm -hmm. in the long and run. He could have went anywhere and he chose Sony. PlayStation. Yeah, he so. could have easily gone to Microsoft because I remember a few years ago, I think it was like E3 2014, maybe even 2013, when they first unveiled like the first gameplay for Phantom Pain on the Xbox stage, everyone's like, Whoa, yeah. Yeah, that, I was like, well, I what's happening? It was 2013 because me and you were over at David's apartment. That's right. I mean, house, not apartment. Mm -hmm. And we were watching, I was like, what? Yeah, because we were like, he's always been PlayStation for the longest time. And I know he put the last couple ones he made before Phantom Pain on Xbox. But for him to come out on the stage and show that, it was like, is something happening? <laughs> yeah, because I, I had watched that, and that was like the first time that I had really, I've you know, I've seen the name and I've seen his. You've really anything. known Metal Gear stuff. But yeah, and that's the first time that I've actually seen him in person dealing with Microsoft stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, so it was really interesting to see him there. Glad he's there. Glad yeah. he's no longer. I'm glad he's happy. Part of and doing what he wants to do because that was the other thing he was tired of like un unlike KJ and Afuni who wanted who wanted to keep making Mega Man yeah it's just Capcom wouldn't let him Kojima was done with Metal Gear mm -hmm. like Phantom Pain was just like in all as great as a game as it was it was pretty much just telling this itty bitty you know part of backstory in all in yeah. all intents and purposes and he wanted to be done but mm -hmm. Konami's like look we have a cash cow we'll let you do another Silent Hill game type game. But you need to keep working on Metal Gear, and yeah, Kojima's you're like keep making Metal Gear games. It, I will make Silent Hills because it's not Metal Gear. But if you make me, if you force me to do another Metal Gear, I'm out. Yeah, he said, peace. peace. Yeah. Well, Konami kind of acts that too well. because when it was when it was rumored that he might leave Konami, Konami's like, oh, Silent Hills, we're not letting you do that. We want you out ASAP. Mm -hmm. Conference ends. Well. Conference ends with Days Gone. Gone, with an actual gameplay, because the first sh was just a trailer, yeah, and right. then the actual was an actual gameplay tech demo type. But the last trailer mm -hmm. of the show... Um, Zach was I, right again. I no, actually, right. Ro yeah, yeah. yeah, Robbie, Robbie was right. Robbie gets half a right, because yeah. <laughs> he said Sucker Punch. But he gets half a right because... He was riding on the Spider-Man. Spider -Man. Yeah. Exclusive to PS4, because it was hashtag Sp PS Spider-Man Sp PS4. Yeah, so... All hell, Shuhei. <laughs> Even though he's first party, but all hell, right. Shuhei. And what house. and what is the most interesting part is you know it panned out and then you see, not even a first party logo. You see, it's technically a second party, be, especially with if you know this company or if you kept up with them like I have, you know their development history, and it's just weird to see them bounce around so much. It's almost like they don't know their own identity. Mm -hmm. But you pan out to the street city. And then you see the Insomniac logo, mm -hmm. the people who 
put Ratchet and Clank on the map. The people who did the resist, and that's what I thought it was at well, first. Yeah, because at first it was showing this big city, mm -hmm. and they were talking, and I was just like, they're about to say. Resistance. Resistance, because I do believe that franchise is going to come back at, at some point too. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was. I think it was too soon. Maybe it may, it may be a few years later down the road when they need another big shooter game. Yeah. But for them to be a Insomniac, and then you see, you hear like a younger voice, and then we're both looking at each other like, sounds like a Peter Parker type thing. And then you're like, this is Spider Man. I'm yeah. like, Webhead, Webhead himself, mm -hmm. come yeah. swinging into the, sh the picture. Game looks freaking gorgeous. The suit mm -hmm. looks amazing. Mm -hmm. I, I it definitely looks from a what is it, like Ultimate Spider-Man type of look. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of a mix of Ultimate and like regular Spider-Man because mm -hmm. the symbol was white. And right. It, very interesting look. I think this is an amazing move. Like, yep. I think. Well, Sony Spider -Man. owns the yeah. IP for Spider-Man, so it just. It I know Activision. Sense. I know Activision had the, made a lot of the games for a while, yeah. but it just made sense for Sony to be like, especially when they gave like the creative rights over to Marvel mm -hmm. to do Spider-Man: Homecoming and to put him in Civil yeah. War. Um, it was just time for Sony to be like, all right, since we've got, we've had this for a while, we've let other people try it. Now let's have PlayStation do it. Yeah. Now what's gonna, what what well, helps him a lot is seeing Spider-Man in Civil War, mm -hmm. seeing Spider-Man get his own movie. This was the perfect time to be like, all right, we need to go hard with Spider-Man because mm -hmm. Spider-Man's in the spotlight even more mm -hmm. now than he has been in a long time. Right. Yeah. I agree. Uh, I think Insomnia will do a terrific job with it. Continue. Would have loved to seen Sucker Punch do this. I, I, I agree with that just because of how just vast, so like an original... Right. They did an original superhero type game and made unique powers that I actually cared about. I still think at the end of the day... Cole McGrath's electricity powers in the first two games were the most creative. Like, nothing against Second Son. I liked it. It was a flashy, very vibrant game. Mm -hmm. But, the, and the powers were unique. I will give them that. But other than the Neon and maybe Smoke, amazing. I didn't care for the powers. Yeah. Like, outside of Neon. Um, one thing I'm interested to see in with Insomniac doing it, because think of their p pedigree Ratchet and Clank, mm -hmm. Resistance, as terrible as that game is, Fuse. Mm -hmm. um, and Sunset Overdrive. Yeah. They pride them. What What is their niche in every one of those games is unique weapons. Unique combat. Yeah, well, unique combat, but you make the weapons each their own. Like in mm -hmm. Ratchet and Clank, you always had that morphing gun, like turn them into a sheep or whatever. And then you had like one, like a sniper type weapon, a flamethrower mm -hmm. type weapon. My thing is, Spider Man just has web shooters, and obviously they're not going to give Spider Man like guns or whatever. Yeah. I'm thinking they of. Maybe will they give the web slingers like different upgraded ability paths and make like his web powers unique? I want to see how they take for going from games that you know, where they made nothing but different type of weapons to making a single game with the character only has like a like set weapons already. Yeah. I think it'll be pretty in depth with the different combat styles because Spider Man is a very agile character using all of his different moves. You know, okay. Well, if you do this, that, and the other, you can com combo, you know, these different things. I think Activision did a pretty good job with some of the Spider-Man games doing that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I think it's going to be great. It's going to be open world, for mm -hmm. sure. Um, nothing wrong with that. No. I'm ready to see more of it, because it looked great. It did. Mm -hmm. Again, only, you know, you see all these, you see, like, it was like, like we said, it was jam-packed. Like, the mm -hmm. hour we got was jam-packed. Mm -hmm. And outside of the VR headset... We really only got what, maybe two release dates? Not well. Actually, if you include VR, I think we only got two release dates. Well, they didn't reiterate on Horizon, but if you want to talk just games, we have two games with set release dates, yeah. and that's Last Guardian and Horizon. VR was the only other one. You had Last Guardian. You had Horizon. Mm -hmm. Then you had. Uh, oh yeah, the Resident Evil Resident Seven. Evil. Yeah, sorry, I forgot about that. Then you had B the Batman, Batman VR is, a, this year, is uh, fall this year. Yeah, and then you had Skylanders. Well, Scott, well, we're not I know they're not a we're not counting. So, that. <laughs> so um, and they call it VR had a date. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, November fourth. But overall, this was a jam packed conference. Yeah, yeah. it so, was amazing. I enjoyed every minute of it. I know, like from the minute they started with that God of War music, yeah. I was like. I don't need to see anything else. I'm done here, gentlemen. Um, oh, good yeah. night. It was um, good. I do. I will say I am disappointed with that they didn't have any Shadow of Mordor two. 
because that was a thing. Because on a, it was leaked on an article uh, f about a month or so ago where that the LinkedIn profile of a professional uh, mocap uh, artist was like, I did a CG trailer work for Shadow of Mordor two, and I don't know, remember if they said it would be, it, they think they thought it would be shown at E three, or just had the possibility of it. Yeah. But regardless, I'm kind of disappointed. No Shadow of Mordor two, but regardless, and I'm also kind of surprised that they didn't. But then again, it makes sense as to why they went ahead and said Watch Dogs has exclusive content with PlayStation 4 because you did not see that reiterated at Sony's conference tonight. No, you definitely didn't. Um, definitely not as many third parties as I thought there would be. Yeah. I thought it would be half third party, or a third third party, a third first party, and a third of VR. Yeah, they did. And then you had all of your... Um, you had all of the indie games in mm -hmm. a little sizzle reel. Yeah. And that was pretty interesting the way they did that. Um, well, they'll probably now that they have several events that they do, and they have their own, and they started PSX two years ago. Yeah, I'm interested to see how PSX is this year because two years ago we got a, like another version of E3, like a jam pack of small and big titles, and then last year was sort of just weird and yeah. more more smaller titles. So I want to see how they do year three yeah. of PSX. I think it's going to be more of a hybrid again. Yeah. Um, one thing that I think will happen is throughout the few days that are left of E3, mm -hmm. where they're going to all these different, like IGN or mm -hmm. Kinda Funny or wherever else, I think that's where they break out all of these other smaller games right. to get more time on you know, mm -hmm. people's eyes on it and everything. Mm -hmm. So, um, great conference. Robbie, what are your final thoughts on PlayStation? Uh, I'm super stoked for, for God of War. That's like mm -hmm. the one thing that, you know, it definitely came out of. Uh, I wish they would have touched a little bit more on what to expect from uh, Rise of Iron, the Destiny DLC. Yeah. Um, I don't care. <laughs> I'm just interested to see where they're taking it because, you know, they're, they're going into the Iron Banner. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see uh, the backstory behind all of them. But all, all in all, fantastic. Uh, mm -hmm. Seeing Kojima, you know, sp speak English and oh, everything yeah. like that. It was awesome. Definitely, my f definitely because, and Colin Moore already touched on this on the last PS I Love You podcast. PlayStation, this was the year that PlayStation was gonna have another great conference. Like 2013, came out swinging. 2014, good, Re like mm -hmm. solid. Last year, it was it was pretty much like one of those like dream conferences where you where you put st where you go to kickstarters and hope things happen and dreams do come true type of thing. And that was it was unique, but it it didn't have a lot of things that spoke to all the that like the vast audience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This year. They went 2013. All it was like 2013 all over again, minus a new console release. It was just from the moment they opened, it was yeah. wet, sloppy. Whatever that means. <laughs> there you go, guys. I don't have it, anything other than to say that wet yeah. and sloppy. Wet so, and sloppy. Um, enjoyed the conferences for mm -hmm. the most part. Um, we made it, guys. We made it all the way through live streaming. If you're watching on the Twitch channel right now, you can go ahead and hit the follow button. And before, thank you for tuning in for it. Before us. we end, we got to make the decision here. Oh, you're going to do that. Yeah. We got to make the decision. I'm, gonna, I'm not it first. Okay. Robbie, Robbie, you So, <laughs> what I would like to do, okay? Mm -hmm. like, I know who already won. <laughs> okay, so, we're going to break it into big two. Mm hmm. And then we're going to third party. Okay. And then I want you to also do overall game of the show. Oh. <laughs> you're gonna put the, you're gonna put me on the spot. I hate you. Yep. Game of the show. Um, so I'll go ahead with big two. This is a hard one. Um, it is very hard. Both have, did a very amazing job. I think Xbox did a fantastic job with the way they paced their conference. The only downside of their whole conference was the Minecraft stuff, mm -hmm. really. Um, you know, adding to Xbox Live with the communities, the searching for groups and the tournaments, great ideas. Um, you know, just several things that they did. Gears of War looks amazing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the Xbox. Three uh, Xbox One Elite controller for Gears of War looks great as well. The Slim, the Slim is very much improved. Mm -hmm. That's great. And then you know, of course, Scorpio. That thing, 
I, I was if it lives to, up to the hype. Yeah, I was talking to my friend Ryan, and he was talking. He was texting me. He's like, the Scorpio has just under the specs of the 1070, so it's like a little bit under the 1080, mm-hmm. which is the best graphics card yeah. on the market. Wow. So the 1070 is still freaking amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Microsoft did a fantastic yeah. job. PlayStation. It might be just because it came right after it. Yeah, and we're still on that high right now. Still on the high and everything, but having a live orchestra, having all of this, it just felt very, not necessarily formal, but it felt elegant. Mm -hmm. Uh, I like Xbox's, you know, uh, platform. It looks very cool, very edgy. Phil Spencer, great guy. I like him, but... Well, it also kind of speaks to how the companies are run. Like, mm-hmm. Phil Spencer is all about business, but he wants to have fun at the same time. Like, mm-hmm. he's going to hit you, and he's going to give you what you want and give you all this hardware, whereas Sony's just like, we know you wa- we know why you're here. We we came here to have fun, too. Mm-hmm. Sit back and relax. Have yeah. a good old time. I, I think both of them did a great job. I, I just have to go with the thing that speaks to me the most on this one. So I'm going to go with Sony for mm-hmm. the big two. Uh, Derek, who do you go for? Actually, let's let's have Robbie go. Let's have because I want because I uh, just want to hear your thoughts. Well, I'm gonna go with saying that Sony had uh, an amazing conference, way better than last year and even the year before that. I feel like um, definitely showing off um, God of War with Norse. Mythology, the side of it. Oh, we took them to the last try. Uh, <laughs> was was fantastic. Kojima, Ko, I almost messed that up. Kojima, Ko, Kojima, mother freaking <laughs> god, oh, Kojima. <laughs> Man, Coming in, in even though game ever <laughs> I tell you, what. I am so tired. I don't even know if I'm gonna drive home. But um, seeing him come in and 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 talk about a little bit, talk a little bit about that game, and then seeing the game. What was amazing. So I give PlayStation major props, but like you said, Sony spoke to you, but Microsoft was um, what kind of hit more home with me because they hit things that I have been wanting from Microsoft for so long, the communities and everything like that. That's a big thing that I have been been wanting to do. I've been wanting to have, you know, you know, possibly start the Nerd Cave community or whatnot and have friends come and play with me. Gears of War play games with me, not play physically mm-hmm. with me, which both are okay. <laughs> but um, Gears of War, uh. um, franchise that I have loved, uh, being able to, to see that game, see the controller that came with it, see Phoenix sitting in that room at, I mean, it, it brought... <laughs> chills. It brought chills to me. Uh, so that's that. That's the conference that I love. And I'm telling you, as someone who's always um, supported Microsoft, and don't don't get me wrong, as saying that I hated Sony. Like it was literally neck and neck. Mm-hmm. The only thing that brought Microsoft over Sony was that I was what I was looking for from uh, Microsoft. They gave me. So mm-hmm. what if you own a PlayStation Four? There you go. I'm just saying, if you mm-hmm. owned a PlayStation 4. Oh, I would... It'd be even harder. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I would have had a tie. I know, I can't do that. All right. But. You're the one that breaks it. And I know where it's going. Where, one way or another. Do I need to go ahead and call Shuhei and congratulate him? <laughs> You're breaking my uh, all right, let me preface this by saying I'm like I'm in, I'm in agreement with you in the ter- in the sense that what spoke to me more was PlayStation's conference. Like we saw like how many freaked out moments did I just have in this reaction video of mm-hmm. how, all the games we saw at PlayStation and it was definitely more beginning to end this. Sloppy and wet. <laughs> Sloppy and wet. Allegiances aside. And looking at it from a broader perspective, I have to give it to Microsoft. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> because, all right, and let me, and then right, I have, <laughs> right where, where, where's the mute button? Uh, <laughs> You're dismissed. Uh, 
Where's Nick when we need him? Um, Bring but, him dick. But <laughs> let me, let me, um, let me explain why. It goes back to what I said at the beginning of this reaction video. While I do it, while Sony does speak to me more, and I've been PlayStation since PlayStation 2, <laughs> I knew I'd get this reaction. PlayStation 1. You um, see who the real Sony man is. Whatever. Um, and while I'm going to make sweet, sweet love to God of War, from a business perspective and from a, a generic game <laughs> rate perspective, <laughs> from a generic, and that, I should probably burn this shirt next while I go and send me this. You can leave that shirt here. For Nick. Um, no, for me. Um, <laughs> what I said at the beginning of the reaction show was Sony shows a lot of what the future is to hold, where Microsoft shows what's in the next year. And I know what I'm getting in the next, and see, E3 is all about what's, what, I mean, I know it's what's to come in the future, but yeah. it's also about what to expect within the next calendar year. Microsoft shows more games that I know I'm going to play right away or within the next year. Sony. A lot of their games just didn't even have a release year. Like God of War, like as much as I hyped up that game, it didn't even have a release year. Like even if it said fall 2017, I would have been more excited for that. But because it's a lot more, and, it, and it, like I said in the Microsoft conference, Phil Spencer knows gamers. He knows how to treat them. And with all the services that he's going to be handing out, Excuse me, with the design lab. See, your body is betraying. <laughs> <I know. laughs> My body. That's what's happening. It, it, recognized, it, it did the trigger word. It was like uh, Civil War. It's like, <laughs> shut down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but especially with all like the features like the Slim, the Elite Console, the design lab, and then all the Xbox <laughs> Live activities. Why are you taking that at me? <laughs> um, it just is more stuff that's coming soon, and I have to just give it to Microsoft. Like... And all like I, I think we we can all be in agreement that last year Microsoft was the definite winner over oh, yeah. Sony, yeah. just because of the content. But this year, I mean, it was hard. Don't get me wrong, but taking my allegiance aside, I had to look back at it. <laughs> 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 From, Sorry, I have short-term memory loss, so I just need to make that note. But if you can't see it, that's what it. There's witnesses. Gary witnesses dies tonight. <laughs> He threatened me, threatened my life, but that's just me. That's my overall expression. That's that's just my winner. So I'm, I'm going to put this out here. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to try to change your mind. I'm just going to put facts. Okay. 40 million consoles sold. <sighs> I know this too. You're Shh. preaching to the choir. 40 million consoles sold have maybe had three first party exclusives. Mm -hmm. Still reigning champion. And now they put all of this good stuff out here. All of these first party stuff. And then you betray Shuhei. No. I, uh, hey, look. Shuhei, I'm sorry that I brought this Cretan on my <laughs> show. Um, Where's Colin? You're dismissed. Let's move to the third party before I get stabbed in the back anymore. <laughs> and before, before, before Zach has a heart attack. <sighs> no, but you do got to admit that it was a lot. I don't it's, have it to was admit super, I'm, not, I'm talking to Derek. <laughs> <laughs> but it was super close, and I mm -hmm. was in the same boat. Even as a Microsoft player, it almost pushed me to pick Sony. But and it, at this point, it doesn't matter. Doesn't uh, matter what you think. What, <laughs> what, the, what either console has done um, in the past. It's what they're doing now, and what they did at this conference, and what we're getting out of this conference. <laughs> Robbie die? <Dye? laughs> no, forty million. That's all I'm saying. Forty million. So. Um, <clears throat> Third parties. We okay. have Bethesda, EA, and Ubisoft. I call it Ubisoft. Ubisoft. Eve Gamo could come out right now and correct me, and I'd still say Ubisoft. I was just making a joke. Robbie, who do you give it to? I mean, I feel like this will be a clean sweep. Yeah. I can already tell you that Derek's going to give it to EA. <laughs> <laughs> Because you can't trust Derek. <laughs> <laughs> I make one honest decision and I'm not trustworthy, but continue. I'm gonna, you gotta give it to Bethesda. Yeah, EA had some good games, but it was very lackluster. Like three good games. Exactly. <laughs> Ubisoft it was confusing to me because they had good stuff, but they didn't bring a lot of their better stuff, and it was just super long. Granted, um, we were tired too, but at the same <laughs> point, they, they weren't helping by lulling us to sleep. It took them a long time, I feel like, to get nowhere. Kind of like what you do in the first three or four episodes of Game of Thrones, they take so long to go nowhere. Hmm. That's what I felt like they did. But Bethesda takes it home for me. Derek? <laughs> 
<laughs> You're going to like my answer better. It's Bethesda. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> because I felt like they're like, an, like the conference we just saw. It was jam-packed from beginning to end mm -hmm. with stuff. I mean, yes, it wasn't everything we cared about, but it was definitely more... <laughs> It was definitely more of what spoke to me, like like what you just said and what I just mentioned. EA had pretty much three games I cared about. Yeah. Battlefield One, Titanfall Two, and Mass Effect Andromeda. And yeah, it wasn't it wasn't as spectacular as we all thought, with the exception of Battlefield One. It was just uh, um, it was just more enjoyable. Ubisoft was good, like I said, I give us like I said earlier today. Um, <laughs> I hate you. Um, <laughs> Solid. <laughs> um, can't even concentrate anymore. All right, so I gave it a solid C plus for Ubisoft. Like, very again, if very few things that I cared about, like it, it opened with Just Dance, got the minutia out of the way, which was fine. But Ghost Recon Wildlands, For Honor, and. I mean, South Park was cool. I don't. Yeah. I don't. If I cared for more of that franchise and Watch Dogs too, it was. It was a few more things that looked interesting. Like Eagle Flight was a cool concept. The gameplay was much to be desired. Like capture the flag mode can only look so many. You know, can only look so cool in many different ways. Mm -hmm. But it definitely was better than EA. But Bethesda stole it. Like the whole thing with Doom and Fallout 4 being VR. I mean, yeah, it was a lot of DLC announcements, but still. The big thing that stole it was the reboot of Prey. Yeah, and what's crazy is Bethesda's only been doing this, these conferences for two years, mm -hmm. and they have freaking destroyed every single time. Mm -hmm. Is that a penis? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Zach? Third party, I'm going to have to give it to EA. <laughs> I know you're being a troll. Facetious! <laughs> Um, Bethesda, you mm -hmm. know, uh, if e if Ubisoft would have gone an hour and packed all of that information mm -hmm. an hour, Ubisoft. Oh yeah. But since it was so, and long, that was another negative was the fact that it went to it was an hour longer. I mean, if it went to an hour and a half, it would have been I think it would have been more tolerable. Yeah. But if you're going to do two <clears throat> hours, you need to be showing a lot more than that. Yeah. And it, it just it was just lackluster because of the length. Of yeah. It, mm -hmm. You know. That hurt them. Big time. Uh, Bethesda, just like I said, did a great job. Came out swinging. Started off the week a lot better than EA did. Mm -hmm. um, so that's who I would give it to. Game of the show. I'm g Robbie. God of War. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, it's 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 a beauty to behold. Uh, I a booty to behold. Beauty or booty. I like booty too. Mm. Um, like Sea of Thieves, booty. Great, great mechanics. It's a, it's a beautiful landscape, and you, you're, you're not only are you, you learned about Greek mythology, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're learning about Norse mythology as well. Mm -hmm. So being able to take what they've learned from the old ones and being able to push forward with a kind of like a new story, and you see this kid and and. Uh, Kratos is like a father figure to him, so mm -hmm. I, that gets my game of the uh, of E3. Zach, I'm gonna let you go. No, you go ahead. No, no, you first. Uh, game of the year for me, um, I would give it to God of War, um, mm -hmm. but I think I, well, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to give it to something that's coming out at least in the next year because we don't know. I'll see when my decision uh -huh. that's that justified by stuff that's coming out now. It's not. It's not appropriate. I'm a traitor. You remember, traitor. What, remember what he said about the, the the people in that walk in front of your cars. Mm -hmm. It's bad when when they do it to him, but when he does it, <laughs> um, <laughs> the one that probably intrigued me the most was Horizon. Yeah. Out of all of them, I agree. Um, you know, Gears of War was really cool looking, all the different mechanics and everything. But Horizon has been this thing that I've been curious about since last E3. Mm -hmm. All of the graphic fidelity in it, the and, you know interesting story with this technology, but you're like a cave person at the same time. Mm -hmm. All of that and getting to see it more in depth tonight with this gameplay video. Mm -hmm. That's why it gets game of the show for me. I know a lot of people will probably still give it uh, to it and it's coming out when? February 28th. So there you go. 
Yeah, let's show it for me. Okay. You can you can do yours now. Okay. I'm just gonna keep this simple. Mm-hmm. Just dance 2017. Good night. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> that would have been I would have been murdered on set probably. Oh, you're uh, getting close to it already. So, so <laughs> it was hard, and I, I'm not going. I refuse to choose between these two loved children mm -hmm. because that I'm just gonna tease it, tease it. They're both exclusives to their own platform. Gears and God. Yep, exactly. I will not. I refuse to choose. But now, if I have to, if God of War was coming out within the next eighteen months. I would definitely say God of War, but because yeah. it's not, we don't even know when the world is coming out. I'm not going to choose between the two. I know Gears is this is October 11th, even earlier if you get the the Super Edition. But I'm not going to choose now. If you put a gun to my head, I'm going to say God of War all day. But at this, since that's not the case, I'm, I'm not going to choose this. I was saying, well, that's easily fixable. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's definitely between God and Gears. God of War, Gears of War for me. Yeah. Now, if I was going for new IP that was shown, whether it was new IP announced yesterday or today versus new IP that's already been announced and is coming out, it'd be Horizon as well. Just because, I don't know if I stated this uh, on camera, but I know I've told you guys uh, in person that when the Xbox One was announced, the first new IP that was announced with it that I really was into was Quantum Break. Yeah. And it came out, uh, April, played it, beat it the week it came out. Very need to go back and play it again and make different choices, but definitely intriguing. Glad I'm in story. Never play. Gonna make me go back and play Alan Wake now, because um, I never got a chance to play that. I remember Alan seeing. Alan Wake was amazing. I know. I remember seeing that a couple times at your place, gameplay snippets, and that mm -hmm. I just never got around to buying it. But now that playing Quantum Break will make me go back to Alan Wake. But I needed another new IP to give me that catch, and Horizon gave that to me last year, and then just re seeing it reiterated tonight mm -hmm. and the conference reinvigorated that fire. It's like, all right, I don't have to wait. I mean, it's not like I have, it's not like God of War, where it's like, it exists, I just mm -hmm. don't know how soon I can play it. It's, uh, yeah, granted, it's still eight months, over half a year before I have to wait, but at least it's beginning of next year, right after Christmas, yeah. after, after I stuff myself full of cranberry sauce and open up my new fancy toys, I have something else to look forward to. Yeah. Nice. E3 is going to be continuing for uh, the next few days. Make sure you keep checking out all the awesome content. Um, I know I'll be doing some Let's Plays with all the demos that were yeah. released and everything. But to end the show, Derek's going to read something that I just <laughs> wrote for him um, out, out loud. I, don't, I want you to uh, look at the camera. You can't and, look at the camera and read that at the same time. No. Well, you know, look up. What if I refuse? No, nope, you can't refuse. <laughs> We're live right now, man. Click. <laughs> I can just I can just take my mic out. <laughs> All right. My name is Derek. <laughs> I am a I am a pretender. I say I like Sony, but I stabbed Shu in the back. He turned around and asked, "Why, Derek? Why?" I have given hours of fun and you do this. I loved you and you betrayed your family. You were my son. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I hope you have enjoyed this awesome video, uh, our recap. If you're listening to this on YouTube or watching this on YouTube or hearing this on the podcast, make sure you uh, rate and subscribe and uh, all of that good stuff. Uh, if you're on Twitch right now seeing it, go ahead and hit the follow button so whenever we go live, you know what's going on. And the subscribe button will keep you updated on all of the awesome content mm -hmm. coming out either on YouTube or on iTunes or Stitcher Radio. Um, any last thoughts about E3? I've enjoyed every second. Well, I've enjoyed almost every second. <laughs> Be honest. I'm looking at you, EA and Ubisoft. <laughs> but my thing is I'm glad I got to come and do this with you guys and it I do fun, I do want to give a big thank you to let me come on. I know this has been your baby for like the last 3 years and I've mm -hmm. just I've been a day ride or die member and I'm just glad I finally got to become be a part of this amazing thing. Yeah. Um, I do want to give a shout out to Derek Diamond. Sorry you couldn't be here to be part of this awesome train, but we you were with us in spirit. Can I be the <laughs> but um, you were with us in spirit, I know. Are you whipping? No, I was, <laughs> I was doing a fist train. Yeah. <laughs> but hopefully, you know, I didn't scare away anybody. 
So until the end where you lied, <laughs> you know you were doing well. Um, but I thank you for coming on, Derek. Yeah, you did yeah. an amazing job. It was, um, thanks, you. You you helped carry things when <laughs> me and Robbie were like, I don't know what's going on, and yeah. you're like, Well, here comes well, the knowledge. So you, know, you did an amazing that, that job. insider knowledge that he has. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, thanks. Uh, I all I did was try, and you know this from our talks that we've had over the years, and I know, you know, we used to do some. Uh, Back when we had this concept of doing like a pre-E3 -E thing, it was just over Skype doing mm -hmm. video recordings. And I remember our first time was you were going to have us talking in the background and having game loop, and you were just like, crap, <laughs> this is not yeah. working out how I wanted to. Mm -hmm. But And then to last year, and I know we've been talking about doing this forever, and by forever I mean the last six months, but I digress. It was it was amazing to come down and finally do it, and I finally see how the magic happens here. So yeah. thank you guys. All the magic, and I'm glad that you got to come on, man. Uh, it's something that I've been wanting since first year. Yeah, you know, wanting you to come by and everything, and you did a great job. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're welcome anytime. Yeah, hopefully we'll do cave. this, be able to do this some or something like this again. Yeah, maybe definitely. Yeah. maybe we can work something out for PSX. I hey, I would love so some PSX. I, I have break in December. It's, yeah. it's crazy at GameStop, but maybe I can squeeze in some time. Yeah. So, do you uh, want people to follow you on social media? Do you have a Twitter? I do have a Twitter. Don't use it as often as I use Facebook, but it is uh, capital DJD underscore zero eight. Okay, you can follow him there, guys. Um, once again, thank you. We love mm -hmm. you. Without you. We wouldn't be able to do all of this. Mm -hmm. Especially for three years. Yes. And if you understand my pain right now, your butt is asleep. <laughs> um, oh, trust me. I know. Mine yeah. fell asleep all last night. <laughs> hey, at least, I was trying to wake it up. Hey, at least, uh, it's, <laughs> at least it's not something giving you pain like your arm is. <laughs> or arm was, I well, should yeah. say. I can actually. It's I was about to say cool. that the super drug that I gave him the other night. <laughs> God, it sounds like I got roofied. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie, where can they find us? We are all over social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. All under Nerd Cave Network. As they're clicking dislike <laughs> and <laughs> unsubscribe. Guys, we have awesome content that goes out all the time on YouTube so make sure you keep coming by there uh, we're gonna try to start doing some more streaming uh, on our twitch channel especially with all these demos that are coming out <laughs> yeah so you know keep coming back I appreciate all of y'all I appreciate you two um, this was a lot of work yeah. and still gonna be a lot of work putting especially it all the rough on YouTube. the rough start to yesterday God <laughs> let's not talk about that but guys thanks for watching listening or wherever you're finding this mm -hmm. awesome content uh, keep coming back for more and more. And on behalf of Derek and Robbie, this has been Zach with the Nerd Cave Network. And have a week.